What is it about your company that makes it unique? Well, we started with a unique product, a tactile sensor that would have the mechanical properties of a human finger as well as all of the sensing modalities that we take for granted when we handle objects. The force of the object against our fingers, the vibrations that we get as we slide our fingers over surfaces, the texture, and even the thermal properties of materials that make things feel warm or cool to the touch. What we realized fairly quickly is that when you have a novel product, you don't actually have a market. There aren't yet applications for that product. And so we've spent the last few years developing what we call machine touch. It's the whole notion of how you use tactile information based on how we think the brain normally uses that information. We have the same information from our tactile sensor that you get from your biological fingertip. We call it a biomimetic design. And so we think it's appropriate to use as much as we can understand of the way your brain interprets that information. So what makes us unique is really putting together the whole package, not just the technology, the sensor, but the algorithms, the applications, the understanding of what we call machine touch. What makes an innovator? So the problem with deciding what's an innovator is you have to do it retrospectively. It doesn't become an innovation until it becomes accepted. It might be a new way to solve a problem, or it might be even recognizing that a problem exists. But it isn't an innovation until it becomes accepted. Before that, it's just a crazy idea. And what makes an innovator is not just having crazy ideas, but turning them into innovations. And that involves actually filtering through a lot of ideas and figuring out which ones have the potential to be true innovations. And then I went to identify those, being willing to commit the very large amount of time and effort and money that will be required to actually turn it into a successful product or way of living. How does your company contribute to improving the state of the world? We don't really know yet. We got the inspiration for the tactile sensor from work that I was doing at the university on prosthetic hands. Uh, we know that our normal biological hands are not very useful when our fingers are numb. And when you try to make a sophisticated prosthesis, it's not going to be any better than our hands on a cold day, uh, no matter how sophisticated you make the actuators and the motors. Uh, so the tactile sensing, uh, we think, is a very promising approach. We've already added it into uh, prosthetic hand and done some research on that that looks very promising. Uh, there's a much broader area, though, of what are essentially robotic hands. Uh, so the area of telerobots, industrial robots uh, that have to interact with objects to replace humans on the assembly line or to replace humans in the battlefield. Uh, one way to avoid the need for prosthetic hands is to keep people out of harm's way. Uh, and so if we really can replace touch, we can make all of these kinds of machines uh, much better, much more effective, uh, and much more available to be deployed in a widespread way in places where we need them. There's another area that took us by surprise. Uh, consumer products are often valued and uh, purchased on the basis of look and feel. And so understanding what the feel of an object is in some objective way is important to industry in designing those products. And it's important to industry in quality control to make sure that they're still delivering the product that the consumer expects. So we've had a lot of interest from major companies, and we're working with several of them, uh, to provide an objective form of tactile sensing that will tell them and computers that can analyze those data uh, what it is about the interaction between fingers and objects that makes products desirable or not desirable. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Thank you.